Hey everyone, Pistol Time here for another episode of Pistol Starts. In today's video, we'll be talking about car mechanics. Here's a quick breakdown. First, we'll be talking about how to get and how to not get into your car, how to slow down as fast as possible, how to not take damage when you get out of your car, how to drift as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible, and lastly, and the most important, We'll be talking about how the auto brake feature works in PUBG so your car never rolls away. Stay tuned. Have you ever been in that situation when your car is rolling away from you and you simply cannot get in it? Or when your friend has simply no time to slow down and when picking you up rolls you over? Well, there's two reasons why. First, you cannot get into your car if you are in a full sprint animation simply doesn't work. You'll end up hitting yourself. Second reason is that you cannot get into a car that is going faster than 15 kmh. If your friend is rolling faster than 15, tell him to slow down or you won't be able to get in it. First, let me demonstrate what I mean. If you're in full sprint animation, you cannot get into the car. Just try it. And try it again. It simply won't work. Full sprint animation is when your arm and your legs start going faster and you start hearing the footsteps louder. You start hearing one big footstep and then that means you're in full sprint animation. Now. And you won't get into the car. But if you go mid animation, like this, you'll be able to get into the car. So when you run after your car, make sure you stop and get into the car. Or if your car is rolling, strafe and get into the car. The fastest way to slow down is not only by pressing spacebar, but also pressing S at the same time, just like this. And you can get out of your car very safe. It is a little bit faster than just spacebar or just S. Now um, I'm just gonna try and press spacebar. You can see that the car rolls a lot farther away. The faster you go in your car, the more damage you'll take when you get out of it. This leads player to get out of the car at 0 km per hour, especially because people often take a lot of damage when they get out of the car and they get scared of it. You shouldn't be scared after I show you how exactly the damage ramp up works. First, from 0 to about 25-30 km per hour, you won't take any damage when you get out of your car. Like this. I already had a little bit of damage down. I actually didn't take any damage. After that, the next increment is between 35 and 40, 45 kilometers per hour. You take more and more and more damage starting from that point. If I get out at, 30, at 40, I just took a big chunk of damage. But this could also help you knowing that you can get out of your car at 40 and not die from it. You can, for example, drift, get out at 40, and then spray someone down without dying. Now, if you go above 40, let me show you what happens. Now, I'll go at 45 kilometers per hour, so you can see how much damage you exactly take at 45. I went 42. Still, 42, no damage. Let's go a bit faster. 47. Now, at 47, you start taking a lot of damage. That is what you want to avoid. Overall, what you want to do is if you want to take a slight amount of damage and still get out of your car extremely fast, 40 kilometers per hour is your mark. Above that, you'll take a lot of damage and it's pretty dangerous. Under that, and you'll take about no damage. So, go fast, drift, and get out of your car without getting hit though. Like you just saw, drifting incorrectly can lead to taking a lot of damage. This is why I'll show you how to drift correctly, so that you can stop on people and do the drive-bys that you've always wanted to do. First, let's talk about not taking damage when you get out of a drift. This happens especially with cars that drift a lot, like Dacia's. When drifting, you always want to get out of the car when the car is going away from you. So if I'm on the driver's seat, I want to drift left so I can get out of it and the car going away from me. 
If I do the other way around, you'll see that the car will actually come straight on me and I'll take damage, like this. Something else that you can do, instead of drifting left, is drifting right and changing seat, like this. You won't take any damage if you do this properly. Something important to know is that there exist under drifters. Think about the heavy vehicles like UAZ, pickup truck, Broncos. And there exist over drifters like Murados and Dacias like you just saw. I just did a 180. You want to avoid doing 180s because when you pull up onto someone, you want to be hiding behind your vehicle and then shoot him like this. To do so with Dacias is a little bit more complicated. I'll show you. The first thing you need to know about over drifters is how to correct the direction of your drift. To do so, you'll have to quickly drift with, for example, A and spacebar, and then stop pressing A and instead press the opposite direction, D, while keeping your finger in on W. This is very important. I'll show you. Go forward. I'll drift with A on the left. And then I'll press W, D, and spacebar. As you can see, it corrected my drift. But I went back to central position. You do not want to go back to central position, obviously. You want to do a drift that resembles more like this. All you have to do is simply release D when your car is in 90 degree position, but keep pressing W and spacebar. If you want to do an even more efficient drift, what you can do is press S at the same time when your car is going 90 degree. So, I'll press A, then I'll correct myself with D, then I'll unpress D and press S. Just like this. Your car will stop a little bit faster. Now, for under drifters, they're a little bit more easier to get a good drift out of. All you have to do is wait to be in your drift a little bit longer and then correct your positioning. Just like this. Correct the positioning, then you can stop your vehicle. Sometimes you'll drift a little bit more than usual, but practice makes perfect. The last drifting tip I want to talk about happens a lot with under drifters, but also with over drifters. I call it the auto brake feature. This is also the next topic in this video. When you exit your vehicle and you're pressing W or S, your car will keep rolling. If you do that after a drift, your car will roll away and you won't be in that cover anymore. Just like this. And my vehicle rolled away instead of stopping automatically. Auto brakes happens when you stop pressing W and S and, just like the name says it, it auto brakes your car and puts the handbrake on. I'll try to demonstrate. Just like this. Like I just demonstrated, auto brake feature happen when you get out of your car and you don't press W or S, just like this. I'm going full speed, but as you can see, the vehicle automatically stops. If I keep pressing W, the car will keep rolling away from me. Just like this, I'll keep pressing W, the car is rolling away, even if you go at really slow speed. This is how, for example, you see some players making their UEZ drift a little bit forward and keep running behind it for cover. You cannot do that with Mirados and Dacia, because Mirados and Dacias, what happens with them if when you don't go fast enough, they'll stop automatically, but UEZs don't do that. They'll keep rolling a little bit, so you can run behind your car and make sure you stay, you stay behind cover. They will stop eventually though. Auto brake feature also works in slopes. You'll know you have performed an auto brake when you hear the tire screeching when you get out of the car. I'll demonstrate. Car stops and doesn't go down. Something also that is very interesting to know is if you do not perform an auto brake but your car goes to 0 kmh by, for example, rolling up a slope, just like this. 
When the car stops, it will never go backward. Or if it goes backward, it will never go forward. You see, it goes up the slope and instantly stops. So auto brakes happens when the vehicle goes at 0 kmh or if you're not pressing double euro S when you get out of the car. Maybe you're thinking right now, why would I not auto brake all the time? Well, there's a couple of scenarios that you can invent in your head, but look what I can do with not auto braking. I could bait someone with my UAZ just like that. I keep pressing W, I get out of it, and the vehicle will stop automatically up to the slope. It's not going back. It can go 90 degree and it won't go back. The only time this doesn't work is if the back tires, those two tires, lift up. If they were to go up on that rock and for some reason get out of the ground, the vehicle will start rolling back down. But if that doesn't happen, the car will always break, even at 90 degree angles. For a little bonus, I wanted to talk about my car swap settings. I'll talk about what's good about it and what's more bad about it. So, as you can see, I use shift 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc to seat swap. For me, it's really easy to just keep moving forward and then do this and then with my fourth finger, I can easily hit one and two and with my middle finger, I can easily hit three and four just like this. Um, I decided to change from control because I, I felt like control was a little bit weird and also shift lets you keep boosting you keep pressing w and your car will keep rolling like this so let's say i want to kill this guy i can seat swap shoot the guy come back to shift one and then i instant go forward and i'm boosting at the same time so this is the main reason why i changed to shift a lot of people use that um the only problem with shift is this one uh, so in my settings, when you put shift, you'll have to rebind some of your settings here. Um, especially the ones that are 1, 2, 3, and so on, to shift 1, shift 2, shift 3. The reason I do this is uh, when I run with shift, when you do that, when you run with shift, let's say, for example, you want to, um, let's say I have my gun out. And if I press shift 1, I'll, I'll take my gun out. If I'm running like this, and I don't have shift 1 binded, and I'm trying to press 1, nothing will happen. So that's why I put shift 1. Um, it's it's really useful for uh, also the grenades. I, I use shift for grenades too, as you can see. This is all my shift settings. So primary weapon 1, 2, and secondary weapon, they're all shift 1, 2, 3. And for my grenades, they're G and shift G, stun is 4, and shift 4, etc. Um, the only little problem that I have with shift is... When you're driving and seat swapping, nothing happens. You're good. You're not gonna seat. Uh, you're not gonna swap a uh, gun. But the the next problem comes when you're not the one driving. So if you're in car two, seat two, three, or four, etc., and you try to seat swap to a non-driving seat like this, let's say I'm I wanna I'm shift three and I wanna go to shift two, it's actually gonna take my car 98. So I have to be a little bit wary of that when I move around the vehicle. Uh, I don't want this to happen. What I could do to minimize this impact is uh, when I'm not driving, I ac you actually don't need to press anything. So I could change my seat swap to also be uh, F1, F2, F3, F4. So right here, what I could do, instead of having only shift one, two, three here, if I know I'm not in the driving seat, what I could do is make this F2, F3, F4. Um, I make this F1, for example, because I, I never use F2 and F3. So this way, if I press uh, F3, I mean F2, like this, it won't change my gun. Uh, F3, F2, doesn't change my gun. So yeah, that's my car swap settings. Uh, if you like it, try it out. If you don't, I mean, choose whatever you think is good for you, but this is something that works great for me. You guys probably already know that, but getting out of a boat while going full speed, especially if the person driving is turning, will probably result in you getting ran over by the boat and dying. But maybe you didn't know that there's a way to get out of the boat safely 100% of the time. All you have to do is go seat 5 and press F real fast, like this. Your guy will always land in the water and 
you will never take damage. Thanks for watching, and like always, see you next time.